Goldrot's The Goal, Chapter 21. The, the chapter begins back on the personal subplot with Alex Rogo talking with his wife, Julie, who's estranged, living outside of the house. And what he does is he asks her on a date. So following in the change management concept that Donovan had espoused in chapter 20, he's not looking to fix their whole marriage. He's just looking for something basic, uh, take her out on a date so that they can begin the process of figuring out what their life together should look like. From there, we move back to the plant. Again, we've identified beforehand that the robot, the NCX-10, is not actually the constraint in the plant, that uh, the investment in it probably wasn't well thought out, and that there's a heat treatment step that's also a constraint, or that is most likely the primary constraint that is upstream of the NCX-10. Uh, so feedstock comes out of that process and then flows to the NCX-10. Um, this becomes a chapter, and this is true of 21, 22, and 23, about how do you manage a constraint now that you've identified what that constraint is. So Rogo goes uh, into the plant, he finds the NCX-10 idle, uh, non-robot destined parts upstream are being run ahead of it, and uh, so the feedstock that should be flowing to it is idle. Again, this goes back to the point that Jonah had made a couple chapters back, that if you're looking to identify a constraint in a plant, usually a good way to find it is something with a lot of inventory sitting upstream of it. So we go into how do we manage a constraint? Uh, and again, there's a couple uh, bullet points here that are easy to think through. Number one, a constraint should not be idle. Number two, a constraint should have enough feedstock to avoid being idle. So if you're gonna have a binning step in a manufacturing process, upstream of a constraint is a good place for that binning step to exist. Third, adding incremental capacity with different equipment opens up the constraint, and that's actually gonna to turn to be a solution in chapter 22 when they identify some older machinery, but we'll hit that in the next video. Uh, data drives constraint improvement is number four. That without data, without knowing our process flow, it's hard to know how do we really improve the constraint. Number five, you wanna tee up work ahead of the constraint. Just as I said earlier in bullet three, it's, that's where you wanna have a binning operation. You wanna make sure that there's good product flow until you get upstream of your most vital resource. Number six, or number seven, staff the constraint with the best people. Uh, this may not be obvious at first, but you want your best team members working that constraint. This is where you, uh, you, know, you wanna bring creativity to the process. You want a team that's got a lot of psychological safety, that can talk openly to each other, that is really good at problem solving. Last is you wanna modify products to minimize use of the constraint. So if you have a constraint in your production process or in a consulting process, if you have products that you can make that don't flow through that constraint, usually those are pretty profitable activities. This is a fantastic chapter. Again, the best thing you can do is really read the whole book. Um, but when we look at chapter 21, my favorite quote with this is, uh, he says, when you finish the bottleneck parts, you can go back to what you were doing before. And this goes to the concept of, you know, you've got to earn your time away from the constraint. The constraint should always be full. Uh, if you or part of your team or a process in your plant is working on something that doesn't keep the constraint fed, then you really need to be able to justify that time. So time away from projects that go through the constraint has really got to be earned. Uh, and I, this makes me think a lot about things like, you know, Google has the, if it's the 10% time, that if you're not working on something that's vital to the organization, that is really precious time or time that you need to justify. Um, and it also needs to be that that time doesn't become something that then encroaches upon the constraint. So if someone says, I, you know, I've got, I've got this activity going on, which is what Rogo finds is upstream of the robot, the team is working on parts that don't flow to the NCX-10. So they're keeping that, at the time, they think the NCX-10 is the primary constraint, but they're working on parts that don't have anything to do with it. That's the summary of chapter 21. You're gonna see a lot more a similar activity, really talking about constraint tactics, constraint management in chapters 22 and 23. Go buy the book. Remember that every day that you take the theory of constraints and apply it to your life and to the world around you, you make both of those better. So use the theory of constraints to make a better world and a better life for yourself.